Good afternoon and welcome to uh, yet another episode of The Angry Astronaut, sort of a special one simply because I am back home. However, I don't have all the equipment that I had before. Some of it ended up getting uh, left behind in Britain and such, so now I need to do kind of a rebuilding exercise. Um, thanks very much for joining me. Where is everybody checking in from? Wow, we jumped to 83 people watching from like 30. Um, appreciate you guys checking in, uh, please let me know uh, how where everybody is checking in from. We're going to be discussing some of the smaller launch providers, um, not the European ones per se, simply because the European ones haven't really launched yet, with the exception of Skyrora on a very small basis. Um, hello, Canada, Long Beach, Ohio, London. Hello. Um, thanks very much for tuning in. Where's everybody else checking in from today? Georgia, hello. Uh, obviously, I'm not far away from you at all. Wisconsin, Scotland, hello, Seattle, and Chicago, New Jersey, Liverpool, uh, very fond of Liverpool, really in, enjoyed all of my visits there, no question about that. Finland, hello, Missouri, Montana, uh, South Wales, uh, it's uh, Vladosta. Hello, Vladosta. Louisiana, United Kingdom, Mississippi, Teesside, by the way. I'm really glad to have every Wagga Wagga Amsterdam. Uh, Mississippi is my dad's home state, by the way. Uh, he's from Amory, Mississippi, a tiny little town uh, in that state. Georgia, Virginia, Illinois, uh, town apparently upstate New York. Hello, and thanks very much again. Another one from Georgia. Fantastic. Um, Forrest, you are quite welcome. Very glad to be tuning in. So yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's been in the news, but nobody's really asked the question, what the hell's going on with, uh, with these launches lately? Because we've had a lot of success from SpaceX. SpaceX has obviously learned how to launch you know, rockets, and they do it extremely well. However, um, when it comes to everybody else, and I do mean everybody else, um, it's been a long list of failures. The only possible exception to that is Rocket Lab. And uh, by the way, I want to put this out here, and I'm going to put it out a couple of times during this live stream um, Rocket Lab is launching on Monday from a place that's very close to me. If you guys want me to cover that in person, I'm willing to do that. Um, however, I mean, I'll need support to do it. And that's something I'm really not feeling comfortable with, with right now with the amount of help you guys have given me in the past. If you really, really want me to go and cover the, that launch, everything's in the description as to how to contribute to the channel. But once again, I mean, uh, an Electron launch is not particularly exciting unless you're really into it. And I'm really into it, obviously. But having just returned, um, you know, that is entirely up to you guys as to, as to whether or not you'd like me to go and cover it. Um, because frankly, I don't get paid until Monday. <laughs> so going myself is not something that's really all that doable. Okay, so enough about Rocket Lab. I am certainly hoping that they carry out a successful launch um, because it is uh, that's going to be their first launch attempt from the United States. They are ostensibly an American company, and yet they have never launched from America. Now they're finally going to try to change that from uh, from uh, Virginia. And it's far from a sure thing. John, thank you so much for being a supporter, right, by the way. Thanks so much. Really do appreciate that. And yes, that is a very good point um, that was just made. And, you know, it's a point that uh, that all of us need to keep in mind is all the failures SpaceX had before they ever really got anywhere. I mean, that is a, a huge, huge issue. You know, it's the fact that they had three straight failures um, and almost went bankrupt, as a matter of fact, before they became successful. So, you know, that is definitely something for everybody to keep in mind. But still, as of late, we've had just lots and lots of letdowns. Obviously, the most public one was the Virgin Orbit failure. Um, and that was a company that had had four straight successes. Um, it, you know, they had a failure with their first test launch, but everybody expects a failure with the test launch. Um, and then they were doing really well. And then all of a sudden they had that uh, 
uh, failure. And for those of you who um, who haven't seen my video today, there was a very very nasty um, article that was uh, that was that came out a couple of days ago in Britain from Express, um, and they uh, and it's essentially they said that a Virgin Orbit knowingly launched with technical issues on the rocket and only had about a 50-50 chance of success and launched anyway because of pressure they were feeling from the British government. I, it, it, spoiler, spoiler, um, I totally disbelieve that. Um, I'm very skeptical about that story simply because it's, it's it was be financial suicide for Virgin Orbit to make that kind of decision right now. They weren't in the best of financial circumstances, didn't have a whole lot of free cash flow and to throw away all that effort, all that time, all that money invested at this time would have been absolutely idiotic. Um, so I can't imagine that they would have done that. By the way, I've got some more people checking in. Thanks so much uh, from Calgary. Thank you uh, very much. I do appreciate that. So yeah, I mean, you know, it's but you know, aside from the Virgin Orbit failure, we also had um, ABL. Now, ABL, this was it took them forever to even attempt a launch, and then when they finally did, it was pretty bad. I mean, they didn't get anywhere near as far as Virgin Orbit did. Um, the engine burned for a little over 10 seconds. And this is something that anybody who's really excited about or that the SpaceX and the whole Starship thing needs to keep in mind. They had a total loss of power on their rocket and it came up and pretty much after 10 seconds went straight back down. And when it went straight back down, it had most of its propellant and oxidizer still in the rocket and blew up with a very forceful explosion, which by the way, they are have not shown. I've, they've done everything they can actually to hide the details of that from the public. Um, unlike SpaceX, that was more to show people every damn RUD that they've ever done, this uh, ABL was has been very, very guarded about this, as most small launch providers have been. So, in any event, that was a uh, that was very sad indeed. Uh, what happened with them? And as I say, it wasn't just a loss of the rocket; it was a considerable amount of damage to the launch facility. If something like this were to be repeated with Starship, one would wouldn't expect that with SpaceX, but at the same time, we also have to remember that this is a brand new ship with brand new engines, um, a lot of untested and untried systems, you know, something like that happening with Starship would be, you know, an explosion of many, many, many times the magnitude. Um, once again, we don't, yeah, that's, that, that's, you know, not very likely, but that is indeed what happened with ABL. And it was a very uh, forceful and violent RUD that resulted in a considerable amount of damage to the launch facilities. Again, we don't know exactly how much because they're not showing us any of that information, um, which once again is a bit uh, a bit controversial, but what are you going to do about that? Um, yeah, I, a good point, Bernie. I mean, Atlas V, the only rocket that's currently able to, to go to orbit. Dirt Road Drones, thank you so much for jumping on board with this. Thank you so much for your support. Like I say, uh, regardless of whether I cover the Rocket Lab launch or not, um, on Monday. Uh, you guys' support right now is huge because, frankly, Google is cut back on their revenues to all of us creators by about 40%. It's been pretty devastating. So I really do appreciate you guys jumping in like this. You guys are awesome, especially given what the economy's like right now. You, you guys' generosity is mind-blowing. Um, once again, trying to see if the, you know, there's any way I might be able to, uh, to make um, you know, covering the Monday launch from Rocket Lab happened, but at the same time, not really expecting it uh, because you guys have done so much for me while I was in Europe, just unbelievable amounts. So in any event, let's move on. So, you know, Rocket Lab, of course, we are expecting success from them in Virginia, but we can't say, I mean, it's hard to say that for certain. They've never tried to launch from anywhere except New Zealand. Conditions are 
always different. I mean, conditions obviously are radically different in Virginia compared to New Zealand, um, and also a lot more logistics involved in, in bringing the rocket over and the equipment, etc. John, thank you so much. Really do appreciate your support. You're fantastic. Thanks. Thanks so much. Makes a huge difference to me. Supex jumping on board with $20 Canadian, $20 Canadian. Thank you so much. Really do appreciate that. So yeah, I mean, Rocket Lab is kind of the big exception out there. Virgin Orbit until recently was the big exception out there too. the companies that, you know, the small launch companies, uh, you know, the non SpaceX companies that had had a lot of success. There's one thing to keep in mind with all of these though, they all have billionaire founders, all of them. What does that say? Does it say that you need to have that kind of enormous amount of financial support in order to be, be, be successful? It would appear that way thus far because Astra doesn't have a billionaire founder and has had a long string of failures. Um, then you have Firefly. Yes, they did manage to get to space and deploy the satellites, but it was not deployed in a high enough orbit. And all of those satellites came right back down into the atmosphere and burned up. And then you had ABL, the engines burned for a grand total of 10 seconds, came back down and exploded. You know, the question comes to mind then, if you don't have a billionaire founder with really deep pockets, are you going to be able to get by? Um, Kai, thank you so much. Really do appreciate that. Actually, I'm not as familiar with Stoke Stage, um, the the second stage aerospike. Aerospike engines are, of course, very interesting. They're also very controversial. Um, I would very much like to look into that. And your second sentence, my answer is yes. I'm very concerned about that. I think that Elon Musk uh, possesses Howard Hughes' genius, and he also possesses a lot of his psychological problems. And the Twitter may indeed be his spruce goose. That may this may be the thing that drives him over the edge. I certainly hope not. I, you know, Elon Musk is extremely important to the world of space flight. Unbelievably important. You know, it's vital that he stays in the game. At the same time, though, I mean, I think we can all agree that the man is is far from from stable. And, you know, anything can happen to anyone. Um, that includes me, for that matter. I'm far, far from stable, too. If I was dealing with the kind of pressure that he's dealing with right now, uh, the amount of craziness associated with Twitter, um, I, I can't even imagine how I would keep my sanity. Um, and, and once again, I mean, I've asked him online, why are you doing this? Why are you doing it? Um, he answered me once and he said, "With if, if we don't do something about the woke mind virus, um, we'll never get to Mars. He seems to believe that the this uh, this this uh, woke cultural issue that we face right now is is going to destroy our civilization. I, I don't know. I'd like to honestly, I'd like to talk to him more about that to hear you know in, him his opinions in detail. I mean, political correctness has been around forever. God, it was a thing thirty years ago when I just after I graduated from college. It's been and that's been with us forever. Um, so I don't know. Once again, I, and, and just so you know. As many of you are very familiar, I stay very middle of the road when it comes to all that political crap. I don't, I, taking sides on that is not what I do, especially not on this channel. This is about space flight, not about any of that nonsense. So in any event, we'll, uh, we'll keep moving on. Once again, deeply appreciate everybody's support. Over 200 people. Um, <laughs> yes, a nice quote, which John, which I guess came from uh, mostly from speed. That's a great one. Poor people are crazy. I'm eccentric. Um, yeah, I would say that uh, Elon definitely falls in, into that category. Um, so once again, deeply appreciate everybody's support and what you've been doing today, uh, you know, keeping this channel going uh, during tough times at Google. And also hopefully, um, you know, once again, just throwing it out there, not necessarily a hopefully thing. This is mostly just, you know, the opportunity being here. If you would like me to go and cover the Rocket Lab launch in Virginia, um, there are ways to do that in the description. You know, that's it's all laid out there if that's something you'd like me to do. The launch is on Monday. So this is something that would need to happen very fast. But at the same time, all I have to do is drive there and get a hotel room and things. We're not talking a ton of money here.
here. So, yeah, that's up to you guys. Um, all right, let's move on. So, so the question getting back to, you know, we're getting back to is, do you need a billionaire founder to be successful with a space flight company? Thus far, it would appear that the answer is yes because nobody has been successful in getting something to orbit without a billionaire founder, with a possible exception of Astra. But the problem with Astra, of course, is they've had so many failures in conjunction with their one successful orbital shot that it really uh, didn't help much. Mike, thank you so much for jumping on board as an angry advocate. Make sure to keep uh, keep your eye on the Discord server, um, our, our, the notifications that we have on the uh on the paypal or not the paypal the um the youtube uh angry advocates uh messages that we send out you'll get an invitation to become part of the discord server and get some unique content that we provide hello supax um your answer to that question supax is yes um, if you want to do direct contributions to, to do the Virginia launch thing uh, with Rocket Lab, PayPal's the best way. Um, and thanks very much for that. And once again, I am in no way expecting that this is going to happen. Um, you guys have been hugely generous to me already while I was in Europe, and it might be time for a break. So that, that's fine as far as that's concerned. But I just want to throw it out there as a possibility. Okay. Um, do you think that sometime in the future we will be building rockets in space? Absolutely, Thomas. I think that's the only way when it comes right down to it in the future, the amount of effort, the amount of energy per kilogram, regardless of whether you're using Starship or not, regardless of whether you're using a reusable rocket, the amount of effort and energy that's required to get mass up into space is so insane that the most more logical way, the more efficient way of building rockets is to build them in space, utilizing resources from asteroids and and the moon, you know, the moon and the asteroids obviously not having nearly as much delta V requirement as it takes to get off the Earth. Everybody talks about what a perfect place the Earth is. And in many respects, most respects, of course, they're right. But in terms of exploring the solar system, this planet sucks. Um, the gravity pull of this planet is so intense that it requires insane amounts of energy just to get small amounts of payload off the planet. It's incredible how much energy is required. Um, if our planet were roughly half the size, two thirds the size, the amount of energy it would require would be drastically less. Um, and it'd be a lot easier to explore the solar system. Now, of course, it's just about every other respect, this planet is great, but yeah. Um, well, let's see, what else we got here? Jude, hello, um, you only need um, a billionaire founder so you don't have to rush for success so as to raise me yet. And I think that's a good point. And, you know, in some ways, perhaps that's a good segue for us to talk about another problem we have here. There isn't enough investment. There still are not enough people investing in space. As a matter of fact, in 2022, we had a drop of, if I remember the figures, roughly 40% in private investment in space compared to 2021. There is a lot of people who lost a lot of confidence in space over the course of last year, which is so ridiculously short-sighted. And yeah, what it does mean is that people may have invested smarter. They may have invested in the companies that are more likely to succeed. Um, but still, Nevertheless, um, that is, uh, you know, that's something to consider. And one of the reasons, again, the companies that don't have billionaire founders may find themselves struggling. John, hello. Thanks you. Thank you so much for the $10. The one thing that gets me really angry about space, the one thing that gets me really angry about space is the waste is the old boys network of companies that spend insane amounts of money on the same old, you know, outdated, old fashioned ways of getting to space that cost billions of dollars and thousands and thousands of dollars per kilogram. That is not how we're going to explore the solar system. That's not how you build a successful space program, but that's still how so many of these people do business because they have so much power in the government and they have so many buddies at NASA and in the space industry and with the military to where they can afford to do things the 
inefficient, the expensive, the old fashioned way and get away with it and still get rich doing it. That's an environment that needs to end. And that's definitely one thing that gets me incredibly angry about space. Um, if you're two sizes smaller, you wouldn't have that other mind. Yes, indeed. Uh, that's, yeah, like I say, there's lots of, lots of negatives. I have a feeling to find planets that are smaller than ours that will still have um, an abundance of intelligent life. And who knows, they, they may explore space a lot more rapidly. Um, and yeah, planets bigger, the super Earths of the universe, they may never be able to get off the surface of their planet. Um, so yeah, of course, you know, there may be ways to do it as they don't care about their environment. Like Nuclear propulsion uh, can work in an atmosphere as long as you don't care about what kind of damage it does. Um, so uh, there could be ways around that, of course, obviously. Um, Got to see what relativity can do with their Terran rockets. I agree with you, Meg. Um, relativity space is very, very encouraging, um, very exciting. But at the same time, uh, they have still not been able to carry out their first launch. They keep talking about it, keep talking about it, keep setting dates keeps, you know, scheduling times, and then they keep backing off of it. Now, that could be because they, you know, they want, they have this objective, they have this dream and this goal to be able to get something into orbit their first time out of the gate. If they were able to do that, it would be an incredible accomplishment, simply astonishing if they could pull that off. Um, but once again, it's who knows, it'd be fantastic if that were the case. Could civilizations and supers build space elevators? Yeah, sure they could, Thomas, especially space elevators might be um, a little bit easier because they wouldn't have anything in space to interfere with them. There, there's certainly ways around uh, most scientific challenges. I still don't think the light barrier is ever going to be overcome. Um, that is one opinion that I have is in. And I make a change at some point. The whole um, warp drive, the Al Kubir warp drive concept. I don't, I don't subscribe to that unless aliens are currently watching us with UFOs right now, and we just haven't identified that yet. I, I would, I'm confident that if warp drives were a thing and they could be built, they would be all over the place. There'd be ships everywhere. Um, you know, including visiting us on a regular basis. And maybe they currently are, but we still don't have that tangible proof in place. So yeah, um, that's that's one thing. The light barrier is something I still have, a, have an issue with. Although I have an, uh, a video coming out tomorrow about antimatter propulsion and a type of starship that will be able to reach 92% of the speed of light um, which, yeah, sure, that's not a warp drive ship, but it is a ship that could carry out interstellar journeys. Um, so stay tuned, guys. Got something interesting coming uh, on the horizon here really soon. Um, let's see. Yeah, chemical. Yeah, I agree. Ne never going to get us uh, very far. Um Let's see what else we got here. I, once again, just to get back to what we have been talking about, what we've been discussing is all the failures that have come up with the small launch providers, the challenges that they've been facing, some of the new launch providers. And the fact of the matter is, is no company up to this point, unless maybe Chinese companies might be an exception, um, but no company up to this point has been able to send anything into orbit if they don't have a billionaire founder. You've had Virgin orbit, you have Rocket Lab, you have SpaceX, but you, nobody else really, um, not yet. Now, I think Astra, as they say, they got to orbit once, um, but they had so many failures that they had to retire the rocket that they were using. So that's not much of a success. Um, and then Firefly, of course, did reach space, but not successfully. The payloads um, burnt up in the atmosphere. And uh, then, of course, you have ABL. Um, that uh, that was scheduled to be the first company to carry out a successful orbital launch from Western Europe, vertically anyway, and they failed too. Um, so and and failed rather spectacularly, even though we didn't get to see it, even though they hit it, hit it from us. Um, 
apparently a pretty mammoth explosion that did damage to their uh, damage to their launch facilities. So a lot of that going on right now and not a whole lot of successes. I hope that soon, aside from SpaceX, I hope that we see a dramatic change in that. I hope that uh, Rocket Lab gives us something amazing to look at um, in uh, on Monday. And I think it's important that they do. I think it's very important that Rocket Lab comes through because, as I say, they're ostensibly an American company. They're, you know, it's important to them to carry up American military payloads. It's one of the reasons why they relocated their corporate headquarters to the United States from New Zealand. And yet they have yet to launch anything from uh, the U.S. And uh, this, the Electron is supposedly the first of a lot of missions, most significant of which is the Neutron. The Neutron will be launching from Virginia as well. Um, and that's going to be, when that happens in 2025, at least that's the estimate, that's going to catapult Rocket Lab into a whole new arena of competitive capabilities um, with reusability, a very low launch cost, a rocket with, with a five meter fairing, which means that rocket is capable of hauling Crew Dragon or the Dream Chaser, or Starliner, if you really wanted to. In other words, all of the human-rated vehicles that we currently have, Neutron will be able to carry those into orbit. Again, that will catapult Rocket Lab into a completely different arena of competition. Um, competing with everybody, including SpaceX. Um, and that will be interesting. Yeah, John, I agree with you about Astra. Um, I am holding out hope for them as well. Um, if for no other reason, they signed a very, uh, very lucrative contract with Saxaford Spaceport in the UK. Uh, great people up there in, in Saxaford. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see them succeed from there. They have a dedicated launch pad, um, not to them in particular, but to them and ABL, all American um, launches will take place out of launch off of Launchpad Elizabeth um, in in, uh, in Shetland, and, uh, and then of course you have uh, a German company RFA that's established an agreement to exclusively make use of Launchpad Fredo um, at uh, at Saxavord, and they paid over ten million pounds minimum, ten million pounds, possibly more. Um, and in order to secure that deal with Saxaford. But, you know, these European launch companies, they're also these dark horses coming in on the inside track with every failure that we see from these American small launch providers, ABL, Firefly, et cetera, um, it opens up a window of opportunity for the, uh, the German launch providers, for the British launch providers that are rapidly moving towards a moment of launch for themselves, um, that, that could change things in a huge way, I'll tell you. Um, MSU, thank you. MSU Kiwi, thank you so much for the $10 New Zealand. And I totally agree with you. Go Rocket Lab, go absolutely, and without question, this is a New Zealand company, New Zealand engineers, New Zealand founder. I mean, come on, the whole American, you know, headquarters or that's based in the U.S. That's we know why that's being done. It's just so that you can so that you can get those U.S. military contracts because for some reason we Americans are so incredibly protective of all that stuff. That's the only reason. Other than that, it's a Kiwi company through and through, and all of us know it. Um, so let's see, uh, rocket left neutron could retrieve its second stage. They fuel up the rocket without a payload. Maybe so. Um, I'm interested in to see what ends up happening with that. Long March 9 being a starship co copy. Well, what do you expect from China? <laughs> That's what they do. Right. And we just got to see a uh, lengthy static fire or rather a lengthy test of the second stage of their um, of a small scale kind of a mini starship clone that they are making. Um, and, you know, well, that's what they do. They copy what other people do and sometimes end up doing it better. Um, they don't seem to really be very respectful of copyright laws, but uh, that's that's them. But uh, but yeah, 
Um, I think that uh, that's something that should be taken very seriously. Long March 9 being a reusable vehicle um, will ultimately make China very, very formidable. And by the way, just recently, they had their fifth launch already this year. China's launch cadence is starting to really catch fire. Um, and, uh, and they are a powerful, powerful um, or, uh, country, to say the least. Um, thank you so much for the 22 uh, euros. Uh, Vicky, I guess. I'm sorry. I, I, I should know what that means, but I don't. Uh, the 22 euros is, is a huge contribution, though. Once again, thank you. These things making a massive difference um, to, to my channel. Not only, you know, just uh, part of me is, is hoping that maybe I'd be able to get to Virginia to cover the rocket lab launch on Monday, but also, I mean, for no other reason, um, Google seriously cutting back on the ad revenues right now, 40% down from where I was a couple of months ago. And this is huge. What you guys are doing for this channel is absolutely gigantic. And thank you very much. Um, the power of that wisdom is not logical. Yes, I would agree with you there, John. So we're starting to run short on time. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and just give you a quick rundown again of what we discussed during this time. Obviously, you know, companies are struggling. A lot of these new launch providers are having a rough time, and even some established successful ones like Virgin Orbit have encountered these problems as well. SpaceX only seems to be the only company that's really mastered this process. Is it because they had access to the kind of money, the kind of financial backing that Elon Musk could provide, or is it simply because there's, you know, their genius is better than everybody else's. It's hard to say. All I know is I would really like to see other companies become equally successful. Once again, last time I'll mention it, if you guys want me to cover the Rocket Lab launch on Monday, um, feel free to, to, to contribute uh, on PayPal or Patreon if you'd like to. It's in the description. Um, and and it, once again, thanks so much for everybody tuning in and for your support. And expect me to come out with a lot more material here in the near future about these upcoming launches. Because regardless of whether these things succeed or fail, there's a whole lot of these companies out there and they're going to make things very, very interesting in 2023. So thanks for watching. And as always, stay angry about space.